got this little beauty right here. True Temper, Flint Edge Kelly Works. Look at that bad boy, huh? The owner is Andrew over at Drew's Creations. Go check out his channel. A lot of chainsawing and all kinds of fun stuff. A couple little things, little issues on this head here. Um, I mean, obviously there's plenty of meat on it. The profile is fantastic. Pole looks great. Um, it's got some pitting. I haven't touched it yet, but we can fix all that up. The concern I have is these holes right here go all the way through one side of the one, you know, just one side on it. Yes, so you can see it there. It doesn't go through the other side here, just the one side. See it right there? Right in there. So there's one there. And then there's also one right here. Right here. And it, I don't know, it has something in there. but uh, And then also, this is kind of boogered up down here. I don't know if someone kind of, it looks like someone kind of like either grinded or took a saw to uh, get the handle off maybe or something but I'm not sure but I'm gonna make this look as good as I can and I'm gonna weld these holes up right here as well so and then I'll start uh, refinishing you know the the axe itself but um, my buddy Tanton he, he was telling me uh, a good thing to do is maybe get a wet, um, cold, wet cloth and wrap the front of the head here where it's tempered when I'm welding down here just to be safe. I thought that was a pretty good idea. But yeah, this is going to be a dandy. All right. I just heated up, heated this up quite a bit, and then... Uh, had to end up taking, uh, get my uh, stick welder out, arc welder, and um, getting some 6011 rod. That's some thick stuff right there. But anyway, I think I got it pretty good. You know, it's got a lot of pitting all through it. And I did, I kind of wanted to blend that in. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But uh, it's shiny on these parts because you know, from, from the grinder, but, um, you know, obviously it's not even hot to the touch, really. I mean, I took my time on it, but what we're going to roll with that as far as the welding part goes, and we can pretty it up a little bit more. Okay, just got done with, you know, some wire, basic wire brushing and stuff, and, you know, obviously this is shinier right now, um, it's going to be because I just welded it, but uh, you know, there was a lot of pitting down here, and I tried to kind of tack it up a little bit. But this side's actually in great shape compared to the other side. But uh, it's kind of hard to see with this light, but closer. Um, but you know, the holes are gone, you know, there's other little inclusions, but it kind of fits the character of the axe, and I didn't want to get rid of that too much this is a lot better now this if you concentrate on this part here I mean that was awful look at that profile now that's great I'm um, in the other side profile I got it but yeah this side here is pretty pitted up you can see um, unfortunately but you know I got a lot of the high spots off there was a lot of high spots like through here here and 
up here and stuff there was a lot and, and this pole and i could probably weld that right there but i don't know it's not going to be perfect you know but that's okay you know it's it's cool but uh, i'm really happy how this came out that looks like the perfect profile now that was boogered up bad through there um, and then those holes are gone so mission accomplished on that part again that's just the once over initial thing that i did there and then uh, we'll, we'll make it look a lot prettier what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some of this uh some some of this uh, gun blue on it i've got some of this brown l's Oxfo blue is what it's called. So the first thing I'm going to do here is what I've been doing is just kind of taking some fine scotch brite or sandpaper and just kind of getting all these little pits because you really can't get that very good with like a sander or you know anything. So I'm trying to like work all that in there. That and then I'm going to degrease it as best I can with denatured alcohol. Is that the right way? I don't know. But again, it's it's nothing that, I mean, this thing's really pitted up and, you know, it's, it's not gonna hurt it. It should make it look a little bit more uniform. I'm gonna finish up some of this and then we'll, I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm gonna start in some of this denatured alcohol. I got, see, got this. We'll start kind of trying to clean it uh, and degrease it. I don't even see. I want to kind of see what this even does. Because you know, you got to think over the years, there's been so much oil probably put on this. Look at that. There's probably been so much oil put into this that it's like absorbed into the steel so I imagine this process will take quite a long time to really you know get all those oils out I don't know okay so. I cleaned this this side up as good as I can get it with the alcohol degreased it basically so the directions for this again this is the product that I'm using Brownells Oxfo blue liquid gun blue I guess it's uh, pretty corrosive stuff and harmful if swallowed and be advised and all that stuff, okay? I'm not responsible if you drink this. Okay, that being said, directions for use, it says, uh, may be advisable to remove excess of rust with fine abrasive cloth, thin oil, and thin rust need not be removed that's interesting dampen small cotton pad with oxfo blue and rub area to be touched until colored seems pretty simple yeah wipe dry with clean cloth and burnish with uh ought still wool whatever pound sign zero means because like double ought i know what that is but so single aught steel wool or finer. If deeper color is desired, repeat step two and three. Well, number one, I don't have any steel wool. I looked everywhere in my daggone garage and I could not find my steel wool. But I do have some Scott, some fine scotch bright. So go ahead and put one down like that there. And I also can't find my uh, rubber gloves either out there. I don't know what the deal is. I can't find anything. <laughs> you guys ever get that way? <laughs> like, I know I got it somewhere. And it's nowhere. Yeah, that. I'm going to use a cotton swab. So let's see how this goes. Interesting, it's like a gel. I think you're supposed to put this on pretty thick.
too, but. Oh yeah, I can always see it kind of working. Wow. Very cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go a little bit thinner where it's already kind of blued and then maybe thicker on the where it you know where I had to weld and, and grind and stuff. See like right here it seems I probably shouldn't dab it, but from what I understand you just keep kind of rubbing it. I don't know. There's probably someone out there making fun of me right now when I'm doing <laughs> how I'm doing this, but hey man, I like I like learning, you know, hands on, so you can't fault me for that. Looks pretty dry. I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead and hit this side too. I'm gonna get a new cotton swab though. This is the side that I'm really concerned about. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. So far we are golden. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I wanted this to do. Yes, right there. Man, I hope you guys are seeing this, you might not. Let me get you down closer here. You see that? See there's like a blue right here? It's like oxidizing it, perhaps. I'm not sure. I think there's still... Yeah, see this like blue color? Man, I hope you can see that. It's, like a, it's almost like it's bluing. Yeah, you know, makes sense. Bluing it. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been wanting it to do. So, but instead to scuff it up a little bit, that's what I'm doing. I can already tell this is looking more uniform. So that's cool. It, it looks to be working for what I'm looking for, the application I'm looking for, which is basically making it look more uniform, you know? Yeah, so maybe now you can kind of tell. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely tell now. See where I welded it right here? Then I put that uh, blue over it, bluing over it, or it kind of started turning it bluer. You know, darker. That's what I'm going for is like a darker, darker look. Yeah, you can tell good right there. See that? Before that was a real shiny steel. And maybe when I hit it here, it'll be again. It's, it took pretty good. I think the secret is just letting it dry. You know, I mean, this is not going to hurt anything, regardless. I mean, it's going to make it look better, I'm sure. It says you can put it over rust and everything else. Like, if a gun barrel were to be a little rusty still, it says you can use it for that. Does anyone know, know does this uh, cold bluing process hold up pretty good? Or is it just prolonging the inevitable? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if y'all know that. Okay, I'm pretty much done with the sanding part. Now, my question is, because it says repeat steps two and three, which is just the bluing process. But I wonder if I should hit it again with the degreaser. I think I'm going to, guys. I just feel like I should, like something like got, you know, scuffed up on there that needs to be removed. So, I don't see how it would hurt. Yeah, see, I mean, look at that. I don't know what that is, but. Whatever it is, I'm getting it off. 
You know, it's probably like old oils and everything I couldn't get before, or I don't know. So, you know, this is, this already looks, I mean, you can, here, let me get this angle. This already looks darker. The, these, these areas right here where I had to weld. See, I mean, there was pitting and stuff, but I couldn't weld all that, really. I mean, there's patina all in this thing, but nonetheless, it's starting to look better even after this sanding and it's looking more uniform, you know what I mean? That's what I'm going for. Okay, so now I'm going to hit it with the bluing again. I really saturated this cotton swab this time. This stuff doesn't smell like anything. Yeah, look at that. Watch here. See what it does? It says, it says apply like liberally. Well, it doesn't say that, but that's basically what it says. Okay, I spent about an hour on this thing. The first thing is, I'm going to tell you if you're ever doing this. You have to lightly sand this to where it's relatively flat and smooth and almost shiny <clears throat> and degrease it really, really well. And I don't know if you can, if you can get all the oil out of one of these, because I think that's the biggest problem in them all looking, unless they're like a real shiny chrome finish, you know, this is patina, so but unless it's like a real shiny chrome finish, like see like up here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me get in the camera. Yeah, see how this is shiny up here from where I sanded it? Well, if this it all looked like that, this thing would look like a million bucks. I don't think steel wool is going to do that much more than what I had, but it might. I don't know. I might. Okay, I went out and got some steel wool. So what I'm gonna do, this is double lot steel wool. I got double lot steel wool, I guess that's what it's called. And I got this combo pack as well that's got zero, one, and three. But I'm gonna start with the double lot because that's what it said. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this look a little bit more like have more of a little bit more of a sheen. So I'm gonna work on a lot of that, doing the same process, then I'll bring you guys back.